Welcome back everyone, you got Glaze Game Gestures here with episode 9. I like to talk about the Microsoft Xbox, let's just get right to it. Microsoft Xbox, really cool piece of history, the ridges, the big X on the front, the big green logo that says Xbox, there were other color variations, there is a halo green one out there that's kind of like a green translucent look as well as there is an orange one that I've seen. If there's any others, by all means, if anybody knows, let me know in the comments please, thank you. The DC unit is its own kind of enigma. Nothing else looks like that. The AV right here is its own thing as well. And the Ethernet, which is actually pretty cool, is so you can play like Halo Online, Star Wars Battlefront, Fantasy Star Online with, you know, really revolutionary along with the uh, Sega Dreamcast that did that and the PlayStation 2. Um, there's a lot of weight to it. The color's really cool. I mean, granted, I know the PlayStation 2 at the time was also black, but they went with a green rather than a blue, so it didn't look relatively the same. Um, the rubber feet on the bottom, you know when you place this down, you know it's not going to go anywhere. It's really, really stable and situated. As I've said, there's a lot of weight. I like that. It's a little too bulky for me, but I don't get me wrong. I love this thing. The open, the turn on button. You can soft mod this thing online. It's like a ROM emulator for thousands of arcade games, and it just it does its job really well. Uh, there's like 50,000 blocks of its internal storage. One of the earliest consoles that had an internal storage as well as a memory card adapter, two slots on the back of the controller. This thing is just, it's a powerful, quiet system. I love this thing and I'm, I'm happy to have this. I picked it up for 30 bucks at like a Goodwill a couple months back. I was strolling through the electronics section and I was like, no, no way. Two controllers, Xbox, open it up, NFL Blitz 2003 came out. I'm not really a big sports game enthusiast, although Blitz was cool. And I was like, I don't need it. So I believe I sold it back to a retro game store and I got something else instead. Uh, let me show you uh, what I got else here. The second generation of controllers, the black logo with the green in the middle with the X. The triggers feel good. <clears throat> the joystick's a little uh, destroyed, but I mean, it works for what it, you know, what I needed to do. I like how the D-pad kind of feels like a third kind of joystick per se. It, it does what it needs to do. It... It's different compared to, you know, other uh, controller uh, D-pads like the PlayStation 1 being a little stiff and the 2 kind of loosening it up and then this one just, it just feels good. The white and black buttons they haven't incorporated into the next generation of consoles, the 360 and the Xbox One, you know, they went with like the uh, left and right bumper. But uh, I, I like how like the, you can either toggle through uh, items or you can turn on a flashlight or whatever the case may be depending on the video game. Start and select feel good. The AX, the B and the Y are relatively similar to the Super Nintendo controller, they're just switched. I like the color scheme that they went with here. It just, it feels good. It's smaller and I like it compared to the original generation of uh, Xbox controllers. I got one more to show you. Essentially the same thing, although the label in the middle is green compared to the black and green, it's just reversed. And the uh, ABXY is a little different. The other one has like a rubber on the inside of the button. This is like a plastic kind of casing on the outside so you can feel the button a little more so than the other controller. Same thing, joystick works well. The uh, RNL, no problems. One of my favorite uh, controllers, asymmetrically that is, that you know, it just feels good and it plays well. Let me show you some loose games I got. Blinks. Super cool, I picked it up recently, I think for like eight bucks at uh, Lost Levels, a retro video gaming store. It's kind of like a tack meets like a Jack and Daxter meets like a uh, Ratchet and Clank per se. You know, its own kind of run and gun items, action puzzle platformer. It, I'm really stoked to start playing that. <clears throat> gun Valkyrie, really cool game made by Sega. It's kind of like an arcade port of like a Metroid meets like a Contra kind of run and gun and it, it feels like you're in like an arcade. Sega went there with it and it, you know, you're shooting bugs. The only gripe I really have is the inversion of the controls. It's like her guns shouldn't be inverted. If you want to have an inverted game, you know, make it into an aircraft game or like a submarine or a boat or something. I don't know, just having a person with inverted controllers, I personally do not like it, but you know, some people do. But, it, and it's just, the sensitivity is just way, way too fast. I've only beaten maybe like two or three missions and I typically play as the girl instead of the big bulky guy. And that's just what I choose to play as. Uh, Pitfall, I beat this recently. It took me, I don't know, maybe eight or 10 hours. I've seen people beat it in like four or six, but I really liked it. It was a corny, quirky, like 
cartoony aspect to a platformer. There's a lot of puzzle elements. It was relatively easy, very little bosses, and they knew that they were breaking the fourth wall and making it fun and enjoyable to play. It's an iconic game made by Activision, you know, ever since the Atari. You play as a Harry Pitfall, and I just, I really enjoyed it. It's like a corny version of Indiana Jones, and, you know, the voice acting and the dialogue, it was just, it was fun. The items, the slingshot, the flame or excuse me, the torch and like the TNT, which you get at like the end and then the raft. And it was just, it was a lot of fun with different jungle elements involved. Now let me discuss my actual game collection with cases that I have. I'm pretty happy to say that I have a pretty stacked collection as of right now. And I have only one Platinum Hits game. That's why it's gray. And I will gladly get to that as well as I have a reproduction uh, case right here because I was missing the case. And I'll get to that in a second. But if you want to start playing and start collecting for the original Xbox, now would be the time because there's just so many different games. There's like 800 and something games for the original Xbox. And they're really ch relatively cheap depending on like Conquer's Bad Fur Day or other uh, cases where they might be a little more uh, expensive. But I got all these relatively cheap and I'm happy to have that. Anyway, <clears throat> I will gladly show you now. Tenchu. I, I believe this is the uh, sequel to the one on the PlayStation 1 that I have, or at least they're somewhat related because it's the same name. It's not Tenchu Stealth Assassins, it's Return from Darkness. Uh, I'm happy to have this. I'm happy to start playing this kind of stealthy ninja, you know, samurai aspect. And it just looks really cool, also made by Activision. Looking forward to playing this. Battlefront. I beat with my buddy uh, Andy recently. <laughs> And uh, this was a lot of fun. I mean, the original ones are my favorite. I've played the new ones on PlayStation uh, 4 as well as Xbox One. And yeah, they're fun, but it just it didn't have the same, the same oomph as the originals, you know? And I had PlayStation 2 when I was younger, and I remember playing Battlefront 2 online, and yeah, it lagged because the Ethernet cable going through, and you hear the dial-up and all that, And but it was still a lot, a lot of fun. And I had a lot of fun playing this and beating this, so, you know, thanks, Andy. Platinum Hits, Spongebob. I picked this up recently, and I was reading reviews, and I was looking at it, and I'm a big fan of Spongebob. I mean, you know, for those of us who are this age, you know, late 20s, early 30s, yeah, it's one of those things we grew up with. THQ, great, you know, toy headquarters, great uh, iconic publisher, obviously made for everyone because it's designed for the demographic of kids, but it looks like a really fun uh, alternative way of having a platformer, puzzles, and uh, bosses involved, and you can play as Sandy, Patrick, and... Uh, Spongebob, obviously. I'm looking forward to playing this. Halo 1 and 2. What hasn't been said or what needs to be said? We all know Halo, the franchise. You know, with, without Halo, there probably wouldn't be any, you know, Microsoft or Bungie or anything Xbox-related whatsoever if it weren't for the help of, you know, Master Chief and Master Chief again. <laughs> uh, I just recently beat Halo 1 with, uh, once again, the help, for the most part, probably the last six or seven missions with my buddy Andy. We were playing it on normal because <laughs> we were trying to play on Legendary. I think we played the first two or three missions on Legendary. It just kept getting whooped. And I was like, all right, I'm going to put it on normal. We did. Made it that far. I tried to do the last two missions by myself on normal, and I was like, I'm going to be a wimp. I'm going to put it on easy. I did, and I was able to beat it. I'm happy that I was able to beat it in any way, shape, or form that I could, you know? But it... it just it handles well it plays well one of my favorite game franchises of all time i i absolutely love halo halo 2 what what a cool you know way to stand there on the cover of the box you know it's almost like he's posing for you know such a great shot and he knows he is to master chief i mean come on it's just the guns the finally adaptation that you could use the sword the adaptation that you could finally play online and you can there's a ranking system and you can still do land games you know it just you can play as the covenant like it just i'm like speechless because it's just that good of a game i'm happy to have this in my collection too i beat this one a long time ago as a kid as well as the first one but i'm happy to replay it and i will probably uh be playing this here pretty soon halo 2 I picked them both up for five bucks at Calico Games, a relatively cheap uh, vintage video game store, and I'm happy to do business with them, and they're just always great with their support. But yeah, Halo 1 and 2, great games. Ghost Recon 1 and 2, I remember playing these, and like you can hide essentially anywhere as long as you have the right camo, and if you don't move, they won't see you, and you can just camp and snipe all day, especially against your buddies. But as far as uh, the campaigns go, these are incredibly difficult, really, really difficult games, but a lot of fun. They're both complete in box. 
I have the manuals and I have the games. You know, I, I remember being more prone to the second one, playing with my buddies, laying games. Uh, I don't know very much about the first one, I picked, but I picked these both up relatively cheap at thrift stores, maybe two to five bucks each. Happy to play these again. Really, really fun. Uh, relatively uh, realistic uh, simulation for a shooter made by Ubisoft. Highly recommend those. Evil Dead, I'm a big Bruce Campbell and Sam Raimi fan, so I could care less whether this was a good game or not. It's in good shape. I'm happy to have it. You know, and it's uh, Ted Raimi, which is <laughs> Sam Raimi's uh, brother as the sidekick, which I think is kind of cool. Uh, I, I could talk horror movies all day, but, you know, this looks like a really goofy version of a Resident Evil game, you know, and I, I'm really stoked to have this in play. Also made by Toy Headquarters. End of the Matrix, made by Atari. I had this on PlayStation 2 as a kid. I remember I enjoyed it enough to just play as much as I could. And I remember getting stuck on, like, the driving levels. They were a little dark. It was kind of hard to control. Uh, I'm about there on this one as well on the Xbox. And, you know, it's one of the many games that you can go on an HD 1080i. Um, not very, very many games at the time were able to go 1080, but uh, I'll have to keep playing and see where uh, life takes me on this. I don't hear too many good things about this. This is kind of like a Skyrim Oblivion. Enclave is the name of the game, or en Enclave, however you want to pronounce it. Made by Conspiracy Entertainment. I really don't know too much about it. I got it merely by the, uh, you know, artwork on the box and was like, all right, this looks cool. I got to try this out. I have yet to try it. I think I've tested it. Yes, it works, but I haven't actually done any gameplay. Looking forward to this, too. Destroy All Humans. I definitely remember seeing this on PlayStation 2. I had no idea that it was ported to the Xbox. Picked this up recently. This is kind of along the lines of like of the Resident, not Resident Evil, excuse me, the Evil Dead kind of game where it's like a goofy version of like a run and gun shooter. It's like the roles have been reversed in like Zombies Ate My Neighbors. This one looks a lot of fun. Haven't played it yet. Also made by Toy Headquarters. I almost feel like there's a coincidence going on here. I have games made by Toy Headquarters. Uh, Havoc Entertainment and Pandemic. They've done a lot as well. Looking forward to this one. My repro case, Crimson Skies. Picked this one recently. There is so many missions to do in here. And it's kind of like if Harry Pitfall went into the sky with better graphics. Like, there's quirky, corny, like, dialogue. If, like, you know, let's say if Quagmire from Family Guy was discussing how things should be done or how he's going to do things in the sky. I mean, like, look at the back. It, you know, it just looks goofy. But this, this game is highly underrated. A really, really fun game. It took me a long time to play it. Inverted controls, which is fine because I was in the sky. Multiple upgrades with different aircraft. The only gripe I had was like trying to find the tokens. You really had to go into this open kind of world per se through caves and mountains and sandy beaches to find the tokens to get the upgrades. It was relatively easy to do the tasks to get cash. The only ones I had difficulty was maybe either the races. Yeah, the races were the ones that gave me the problem. But countless missions, a lot of weapons and planes, and you can play online as well. Really fun, underrated game. I don't know much about Crimson Sea. I looked up reviews, and it looked like an interesting kind of take on a uh, hack and slash and shoot, um, powerful kind of customization of like weapons. It just it looked like its own kind of thing, like I've, nothing I've ever seen before. And you know, just the cover alone just looked really cool. So when I dissolve, you know, or excuse me, it, when I when I involve more time into this. Wow, I can't speak today, sorry. When I involve more time into this, I will gladly discuss this game more. I could care less what condition it was in. I opened it, it was complete in box, I was happy. The, uh, the game itself is in relatively good condition. Made by Koei, or K-O-E-I, Koei, Koei, however you pronounce it. I, excuse me, I apologize. But, uh, you know, it just, it looks like an interesting kind of like shooting hack and slashy Final Fantasy per se. But looking forward to playing that. I definitely remember playing Brute Force with my buddies. It was like Time Splitters meets like a Halo. You know, it was its own kind of concept. I just, I, I get a little emotional about it because I remember playing this with a buddy of mine who passed away. And uh, I, you know, as well as obviously Halo 1 and 2. But I remember us playing this when we wanted to decide to try and, or excuse me, try and finally play something a little less involved like Halo where it's a little serious this is a little more relaxed but yeah I definitely remember playing this I vaguely remember how it works I know that it's co-op up to four players because of the player ports but I'm looking forward to playing this again too you know that is my look on uh, the Microsoft Xbox and I hope you guys have a good night and uh, thank you for the support and I hope to see you guys soon thank you